Greetings, I am Tom Earl. Welcome to the celebration. We know you could be anywhere. So the fact that you're here today sharing your greatest gifts, your time and energy, it means the world to me. I hope you know that you are valued, you are loved, and you are appreciated just as you are. As you can see, I'm not alone. I'm joined by an amazing guest. She goes by the name of Naz Echeverria. Naz, what's going on? Hey, hey, not much. Glad, happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Are, are you genuinely happy to be here? I don't know. No, totally happy. I love it. I always love our conversations. Ask, ask you in an hour. We'll check back in in yeah, an hour. Maybe check then. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, this has been a long time coming, folks. Naz and I, when do you think we first started talking? Ooh, probably like nine months ago. Mm -hmm. I want to say like nine months ago. I'm yeah. thinking that too. We were in a community together and uh, I saw Nas and was like, oh, look, another Muslim. So I messaged you. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I profiled your name completely incorrectly. <laughs> and you also posted something that blew my mind. So it wasn't just because I was always looking for the other Muslim in the room. Yeah. It was also, you posted something that blew my mind. And then we became uh, bitter rivals turned, uh, what is it, like uh, grudging respect. No, this is a, you can't see, Naz is shaking her head. She disagrees with this, this explanation. How would you say we became friends? What's the, the timeline of our, our friendship? I mean, I think the timeline of our friendship was, yeah, you had first reached out because of a conversation that was started. And then we kind of realized we had a lot in common in terms of our beliefs around marketing and around growth and all that. And it kind of just all went from there. Yeah. I would say y'all that there are just, for some reason, if entrepreneurship was like, a, I don't know, a room that the coaching industry would be like the drain where the excess water tries to make its way out. And uh, this is really negative. I'm off to a really negative start. <laughs> I don't I'm scared to see where this is going right now. <laughs> also wondering. Nas is the real deal. This is all I'm trying to say that there are so many people that I feel like just come into our industry and, uh, and apply just really toxic tactics that work well if the goal is to make money. Um, and and people find their way as customers into our industry, usually because they have a need. And a lot of people who are really good at psychology can exploit that need to their own interest. And it can be really hard not to learn from somebody who teaches that in a way that seems really genuine. And then you yourself find that you're implementing a strategy that is uh, very negative. And so for me, Nas is one of these people who actually practices what she preach. She actually is successful, isn't just pretending to be successful. And everything you do seems like totally in alignment. So I respect you so much. And I feel like <clears throat> y'all should just go work with Nas. Anytime I've ever pitched you, ignore me. <laughs> And go work with Nas instead. <laughs> yes, I fully support that message. Well, what's what? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Let me let me. This is the problem we give to folks. If you really knew me, you'd know that. You know that I like animals more than people. Mm. You know that I can't take a straight picture for the life of me. It always has to have a weird face. Um. You know, I have three kids that I'm chasing around pretty much 24 seven after school pickup. Um, you know that I'm probably a huge marketing nerd and mm. I am passionately obsessed with helping people grow and that I like to have fun. That's awesome. That's great. Okay. Well, I think they've seen enough of our faces. Why don't we turn off our faces and kind of relax into this conversation? I'm in. <laughs> Here we go. So where should we start? What's been on your mind in terms of marketing, entrepreneurship, 2023? What's going on with you? 
I mean, I think one of the big things you and I talk about like all the time is like validity and authenticity in this market space. And I think that like right now at the end of 2022, beginning 2023, we got hit hard with like so much of this coming to light of like all the things that are happening in this coaching industry, but also in like this shift that's occurring. Um, one of the biggest ones right now, which is a hot topic, is that whole AI content writing that's like mm. taking over the internet and everyone thinks it's going to like be a game changer because everyone has their content written for them. I feel like that's a good place to start. Okay. Like, um, what's it called? Chat something? Chat what? GBT or something. Okay. Chat GBT. Talk to me about what you've been seeing. Thoughts. Ooh, Go ahead. Yeah. So first, obviously there's always those people who jump in at any new opportunity, right? We joke about like the clubhouses, the Snapchats, all those, right? They jump in, like this is going to be the thing that changes the world. Um, but the thing I'm seeing is that so many people are leaning into this whole AI content. And the problem is that I don't think a lot of people are realizing there's a lot of scared people. There's a lot of people who are freaking out about what's going to happen with chat GBT and people who help with messaging and people who write content and all this stuff. Meanwhile, I'm like sitting back and totally relaxing and easing into the fact that like, this is good guys. This is really freaking good because thought leadership is going to come to like, you're going to be able to see the line in the sand now because you're going to see the people who are relying on AI, AI content as like their bread and butter versus the people who have original thought and have thought leadership. And I think this is going to be really freaking good for what's happening in the online industry. Mm, this, what do is you think? this is interesting. So we put out an episode a couple weeks to a month, a couple months ago. I'm not sure sometime between September and now. And I talked about uh, how in some town there was a digital art competition and the person who won made their one using uh, an AI, basically software. I think mm -hmm. it's called Journey maybe or something like that, where you, you basically put in a word and it puts out images. And the image that they created won for their category. And so people, it started this debate of, is that cheating? Is that actually art? Those kind of things. And the, the thoughts that I have around AI or technology that can help you create art, and I think copy is art, is I think that the more we can like lower the entry points into creating art, the better. So, you know, it's like, oh, you should have learned how to use Photoshop if you're going to use digital art. But Photoshop can be tough. That can take months, years to learn. And so the person who took months and years to learn, it's probably pissed at the person who in a day learned how to use AI. So I think like with copywriting, there's going to be people who wrote at the same level that uh, like chat GPT or any sort of AI can put out like let's say that that's your skill your skill matches the same level as this ai yeah then it is true that people won't have to hire you and that sucks like for you and i don't mean that as like a sucks for you but that does suck for you but for everybody who couldn't afford to hire somebody and now they can write a much higher quality of copy maybe than they were able to before i think it's great that they can now write that level of copy without having to spend any extra money well but i what think I it's yeah, but I think that the problem with that is, is that you have to understand the difference. Like for me, the the way I go about this is, and and funny enough, I posted this on my Facebook, and I have I got a lot of similar responses to what you just said, um, of like, well, what if I'm just not good at writing copy, etc. But I think the point being is that we're now putting our thoughts and what our like what we truly believe in into the hands of something that scrolls go Google to find like ideas and puts it into words where that's not your thoughts. You're not using your own beliefs and thoughts and message. So we're broadcasting somebody else's message. So, so I guess for me, it's like, it re it'll reset the minimum bar. So minimally, if you're really bad at copy, like let's maybe even say that you have dyslexia or your access yeah. to the ability to write was uh was was low because of 
lots of different things that are beyond your control. Chat, things like this, they can lower the minimum bar for you, sure. which I'm in favor of. And the, the thing about it is now that we've kind of like all reset the bar, whether you're using the AI as like a starting place or more or less, it's going to hire the bar of whoever is able to using AI a bit, a lot or not at all. It's going to basically like raise the bar of those who can using all the tools at their disposal, create copy, create literature, create poetry that really comes from kind of like the soul, like a, a place that technology just doesn't have the ability to touch. That's that's kind of where I'm coming from. Does that make sense? Yeah, but how? Like, right? How can you write something that comes from the soul if you're asking an AI, you know, program tool to write something for you? How's that from your soul? Well, I think the more we learn this technology and the more the technology comes out within, let's say, a decade, it's going to just become the norm the same way right now. If you're writing something in Grammarly is like, that's spelled wrong, or you should use this word instead, or why don't you change around the way this sentence is? You know, that's kind of a norm to us, or even using something like Photoshop or our ability to take so many different pictures on our phone when before you had to have film and, you know, technology is always just erasing artists who for years worked on their craft and then their craft became almost obsolete because now you can just hit the letter D and it can play a chord for you. Whereas before yeah. you had to learn. So I, I think it just resets. And then once that technology becomes the norm, then innovation has to happen. And, and to me, innovation with whatever technology you're using, there, there becomes a point where you still have to discern when it's done. And so some people might be like, oh, this is perfect. They put it through one round of AI. And then you have this other person who's like, okay, that's a good start, but let me finesse it. Or it's not done yet. Like that's where the human decision-making is going to be needed. And it's going to set it apart from, even if we started at the same place, ask the, the AI, the same question, my end result's going to be different than yours. Right. I think it comes down to, I see it as the tool. I, I've said this before. I see it as a tool, right? Like I see it as a tool that if you're struggling to come up with ideas or if you're struggling to um, really perfect your writing, like you said, like if I have dyslexia or something like that and just struggle to like be able to do that. But I think at the end of the day, the problem becomes is the way that this, I see this going negatively is that it's replacing thought because now they don't have to think about what they would say about something. So take away the idea of writing copy, right? Like we get it. Not everyone's going to be great at writing copy. And I don't think that's a make or break for our businesses specifically, but I think when it comes to original thought, that can't go away, right? Like we have to be able to like really sit and think with what our beliefs are, really understand and culminate on that and be able to develop our message, right? Not copy, but like a message of what we want to say. And I think that the fear, the thought I have around that is really this understanding of like, most people are not using this as a tool to support them in writing better copy. They're using this as a replacement to them having to think, to having to develop, to grow, to like innovate, to build and to like really create their own beliefs. And so I think that what happened is, is there is a surge in the coaching industry when everyone becomes coaches, right? And there's copycat versions of everyone around. And now it's copycat message, right? It's a copycat of our beliefs because what are our beliefs anymore if we're using AI that's just crawling Google to answer questions, but it doesn't entail our own thoughts and our own you know, leadership and, and development from there. That's the part that I think is going to give a rise to the fact that we're going to be able to see how many copies and, and consistently having thoughts and, and things that are just generated on the internet versus what do you believe and what do you think and what are you bringing to the table? Mm. Okay. So what I'm hearing is we can kind of debate AI and all that stuff to we're blue in the face and, <laughs> and we see like together ways that it's a good or bad or a moot point. 
but ultimately it's it's really not about how awesome the copy is it's about the message that births the copy and if you yeah. don't know what that is then you can have really great and compelling words but some that are you know just kind of like sandcastles that when the push comes to shove or when the tide comes in it it's not really very sturdy is that kind of what i'm hearing exactly so what's use the difference between message and the copy that explains the message What's the difference? I mean, yeah. the message is really your ultimate, like your belief, right? Like I always tell people your message is your belief. It's your thoughts. It's your innovation. It's the way your take on things is versus copy is just the written out content that describes that. Okay. This is deep. So one of the things that I really like that Nas talks about, so I'm, I'm breaking the third wall. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the good folks out there. One of the things that I like about Nas I think is innovative is is you're talking about that you have to have an innovative solution so why don't you I'm going to pause on my thought I'm going to come back to it but I want you to just briefly talk about what that means so you're going to explain it better than I am what innovative what I mean by being innovating yeah the, the incomparable solution all that kind of stuff yeah so I mean in general I think that we all have our own method. We have ways that we do things, maybe not everyone, but the people I work with. And I think there are the subset, those select few of us who come into the industry, not for the belief of, I just want to make a crap ton of money. And that's my only thought process that becomes the happy side effect, but from a more innovative, innovative space, right? We, we came here because of whether it was something that we always wish existed or because we think things need to change. We came here to build a revolution, to, to start a revolution. Um, and I think that when it comes down to it, it's about being able to do that in our businesses so that we can revolutionize how things are previously been done. And so a lot of times when I'm working with clients, that's one of the biggest things they say, Nas, I, I hate writing copy or I hate doing sales call or I hate doing these things. And ultimately what it comes down to is they don't have a message that feels like their own. They don't have a message that fully and completely explains the gravity of what they do. Um, and more specifically in a way that doesn't sound like a copycat version. So we develop what we call innovative authority using a dynamic framework gap methodology. Um, simple, but fancy way of saying we, uh, we revolutionize, we innovate the industry. We look for where gaps are we identify those opportunities. We see the evergreen problems and seek to, to create and build innovative solutions that fill for that so that you can revolutionize an industry and you can change the way things have always been done um, and put your own spin on what, what is possible. So it came from the idea of like, you see the innovators who have taken the world by storm that have made competition irrelevant. People like um, the Amazons and the Netflix and the, you know, Cirque du Soleil's of the world who came in and, and saw how things have always been done and decided that there was a new way and they were willing to be the ones to innovate that new way into the world. Um, and I just get to help other people do the same thing now, which is pretty freaking awesome. Okay. So I love that. For one thing that came to mind for me is like an innovative solution would be, um, what year would this be? 2013, 2014, maybe. Um, I'm sitting at my computer. I believe it's November. I could be wrong. I'm sitting at my computer. It's midnight. I'm up late. And all of a sudden, what? Who? Beyonce dropped an entire visual album with no press, without telling anyone. Out of the blue, complete surprise, kept it under wraps. I don't know if you remember when that happened, but it, it blew every single person's mind. That was innovative. That is an innovative way in it to put out an album. Would Is this a good example? Yes. Is this kind of, Okay. Heck yes. Okay, cool. So that's that I've kind of gotten. I'm hearing something new that you're saying that that's really resonating with me is this idea of like, what's your belief? What do you believe in? How is that different or similar to having a innovative solution? I mean, I think they're one and the same. I think it's our beliefs of what creates a result um, and being able to identify that belief. So 
I, I really do think they cross over with each other. I think when it comes down to our beliefs, it's, it is that that belief of what we believe is going to create a, a solution is what can become the innovation we want. So um, a great example of this, and I, I use it all the time, is when Robert Atkins, you know, back in the, whether you believe in his, his diet and, and the Atkins diet or not, um, the revolution and, and the beliefs around what re was required to lose weight. Um, I always say that in the 80s, it was just that everyone was doing low fat, low calorie. That was the only way to lose weight. It was just, you got to stick with it. And that's what happens. And he didn't believe that. He didn't believe that that was the only way that people could lose weight. And he didn't believe that you had to be hungry 24 seven in order to get the result you wanted. And so he did something that allowed him to go against what the common norm was and use his own beliefs that you could lose weight. You could be healthy in your own way without having to do all the things we've been told before. Um, and really went from where his beliefs were and developed something from that. And I think I really do believe innovation comes and is sparked from our own beliefs. And when we create those own beliefs is when we develop our own things and are willing to do the dirty work to create something innovative. What would you say was a, a belief that you had that kind of became the, the spark that led to eventually your easy yes method? So I can tell you down to a science, it was this idea that I created called unconditional growth. So simply put, it's this idea that like when I was a kid, I was never the best at like a sport or at school or whatever, right? Like I was good, but I wasn't like the like top athlete or anything like that. But what I did have that set me apart that allowed me to like consistently be great at what I did was that I had what I call unconditional growth, which is I took away all the conditions to me being really good at things and allowed myself to not put roadblocks in my way and not say, well, gosh, I'm not the best. Why even bother? Or I don't, I don't get A's on everything I do. So why even bother? It was this idea that if we could grow without conditions, then the entire world is ours. And from a really freaking young age, that was just my mentality. And I was the girl who like, like I said, at 16 had a job, crushed it, was like doing all the things. Um, and, and just realized really quickly that I, the world was my oyster when I recognized that unconditional growth was the answer to everything I ever wanted. This is, this is huge for me because I, I come across a lot of people who really aren't at the stage you're at where they have a unique methodology for creating an innovative solution. By the way, these are all your words. I love the way you're your verbiage has influenced my language. And I think that's <laughs> one of the, it's such a hallmark of how you've, you've really influenced someone is when they use your words, right? So a lot of folks aren't there yet, but this is kind of like a, a new unearthing for me. Cause I think where they are is they're at this place where they're either starting to, or already have some, some beliefs that they're noticing, they're kind of looking around the room and being like, am I the only one who sees this? And I, I think that like, if you can focus on those and really give those your attention and love that your, your innovative solution will kind of come out of those ingredients. Is, is this kind of, am I, is yeah, this aha 100%. resonating with? Yeah. It thought. starts with being able to be disruptive with your own thoughts. Absolutely. Mm, be disruptive. Okay. So here's, here's my thoughts. Um, why don't we go ahead and um, we were going to make this a two-part episode. And I this was why, because this is like opening up from, in my mind, a whole other half hour conversation <laughs> that, that we're going to have to jump into. So um, why don't we, is there anything you want to share in closing on this um, conversation we have here? Um, and then on the next episode, we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to talk about this. And also there's a question I want to ask you for this next episode that y'all are going to want to make sure you tune in next week for is, um, what's the single greatest contribution someone can do to their long-term success, but we're going to have to stick around for the next episode to get that one. But is there anything kind of in closing, or I know it feels like we're just getting started. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a matter of like, I always believed innovators were born. I thought that you had to be born into it. And that if you didn't have that innovative bone at the beginning of your life, that you can never be an innovator. 
But I think that what one of the things I realized that it took me a really freaking long time to get to was that innovators can be developed and it really starts with us. And like we said, being able to disrupt our thoughts and, and give truth to the things that we want. And I'm excited to tap into that. Mm. Okay. Nas, where can the good folks out there let you know how much they appreciate you other than tuning in again next week? Where can they do that? Um, I'd love to have you join me on any platform you're on pretty much. We're on at next level up CEO, um, or come over to easy yes, Check out my free mini series where I share how my easy yes method has innovated the industry and turned things upside down using a Netflix inspired sales system. I dig it. Nas is the best. Y'all know where you can learn more about me as well at Tom Real artist or go to tomearl.me slash DCM invite. Naz, this is our ritual. What would you like to invite people to do, be, think about, consider, lean into? What is your invitation? Ooh, I think I would ask them to lean into just trusting themselves and believing in what's possible once we make a decision. Mm, what kind of decision? Any decision really, right? It could be what to eat for dinner, or it could be a huge life altering decision. It's just choosing to listen and trust ourselves in every decision we make. I love that. That is a great one to end on. And I hope y'all make the decision to listen to part two next week. We appreciate you. We love you. And as always, we're wishing you peace and blessings. Thank you. Oh, oh one, one more thing. I'd love to continue the conversation. Feel free to join me at tomroll.com slash join. Subscribe below or let's connect on social media. Tom Earl Artist. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>